So Danica, um, is your, what's your favorite animal? Is it, is it, is it an elephant, a hippo, a, a, a rhino? What's your favorite animal? It's a good question. Um, I have to say the wolf because okay. I lived with wolves for many years and they're very near and dear to my heart. But um, I love all animals, let's be honest. They're but all you animals. Lived with, you, <laughs> you lived with wolves? Yes. Um, I lived at a wolf sanctuary in Colorado called Mission Wolf. Um, it is a sanctuary for abandoned companion wolves um, that were once someone's family pet. And wolves are a wild animal, as we know, and they can be really challenging companions. So they need a sanctuary, and that's where I was, and so I lived with so them. So how many wolves were there? Was it like a pack of them? Were there many packs? There were 37 wolves, and we had a series of different enclosures. We had 200 acres, and we had the whole property separated into smaller enclosures. Uh, we did have one pack of five, but the rest were in pair bonds of two. Wow, so you lived with animals. So you're, you're really, you love animals. You're, you're hardcore. I do, I love all animals. And, yeah. um, so, yeah. so um, have you seen the movie, the, the, the Devil Wears Prada? Is that uh, the name of the movie? I have seen that movie. Yeah, The Devil Wears Prada. Yes. So when people wear high fashion, are they like kind of acting like peacocks or, or different kind of animals in the wild? I mean, in a way, it's, it's, it's expression and, and, you know, I, I, fashion is art and fashion is beautiful and, and animals have their own way to express themselves. And I mean, I work with parrots now and it, they're an extremely expressive animal and they have beautiful plumage and be, uh, beautiful feathers. And I mean, it's their form of fashion. So. Yeah. so the reason I ask that before we get to what you do now, I know you spent some time in the fashion world in New yes. York. Yes. And, <laughs> and you kind of lived the life of, of some of the characters in The Devil Wears Prada, is that right? <laughs> sort of, I mean, my boss was really lovely, but yes, I, uh, I used to work for a fashion designer, um, and basically when I got tired of dresses, I decided to leave New York City and move and live in a teepee in Colorado and live amongst wolves. It was my sort of eat, pray, love moment, I think. Yeah, and, uh, so Anne Hathaway <laughs> goes and works for a newspaper, you go to a wolf sanctuary. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, so now you work with about 400 parakeets, is that right? Parrots. Parrots. Yes, 400 parrots. What's the difference between a parrot and a parakeet? Parakeet is a type of parrot. Okay, so yes. it's a, okay, great. So you work with 400 of them, and you believe something very strongly about them. Yes. What, what, what is it that, that you believe, um, and then I'm going to ask you, what are you doing about it? But what do, what do you believe about parrots? That, that everyone, so you want to stand on every mountaintop and just shout out, you know, something what, that, that the world doesn't know. There's a big idea that you're passionate about. What, what is it that you believe? The crux of what I do and why I do what I do is to bring awareness to the plight of parrots in captivity. Uh, parrots are a wild animal. They're not domesticated. They're not a cat or a dog. And we are bringing parrots into our home and we are forcing them into a life of captivity, which is so contrary to the way that a parrot was developed. Uh, evolution gave them all the skills to be wonderful wild animals, to fly, to forage, to, to fight, to chew, to pair bond, to have these really dynamic lives in the wild. And what we've done is brought them into our homes. And the reality that the parrot has sacrificed an incredible amount to be in our homes with us. So what I'm trying to do is start a conversation with people about let's not bring wild animals into our home. Let's not try to take a wild animal and make it a pet um, because it's the animal that really loses a life of autonomy and freedom. Uh, so my philosophy is that parrots should not be pets. So um, of the top 10 pets, you know, in the US, I'm sure dog and cat are pretty high up. Ferrets are probably not very high. Where are the, no, no nothing against ferrets, but yeah, yeah, okay. All right, and sloths are probably not very high. Um, where, where is the parrot? So you've got Cats number one, dogs number cats two. Cats are, are number one above yeah. dogs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have uh, fish technically number three, and then you've got parrots. So um, parrots are one of the most popular companion animals, but they're not a companion animal. They're a wild animal. They're a wild animal in captivity. So how did you come to this conclusion that parrots should not be caged? Like, was it, did, did you read a book? Did you see it in a movie? Did it come to you in a vision when you were with the wolves? Like, like what, what, what's turned you on to this? It's been an evolution. Um, I think for me, I, when I was working with wolves and I understood the, the experience that these wolves were having in, in people's homes and how they were losing their homes and they were being euthanized simply because we wanted to sort of tame the wild and put it into our living room. The parrot issue is, is no different. Um, parrots are extremely intelligent. They are social. They have just these 
dynamic personalities and this immense capacity for understanding and experience. And I started to realize that we have taken this flighted animal and we've put it in a cage in our living room. And it's like, if you think about one of nature's greatest gifts it can give you, it's, it's the gift of flight. I mean, like ask a kid, what superhuman power would you want? You're probably getting a lot of kids that say flight. And parrots have that. that is, it's so intrinsic to their like, very core. It's, it is what makes a parrot a parrot. And we have sort of taken that right away from them because we want that companionship. We want that proximity. So what was the moment that you were like, I, I need to not only, what was the moment that you realized that something needed to be done on this and that you were going to be the person you know, that, that was going to help, help here? I, um, I watched a documentary called Parrot Confidential uh, about an organization called Foster Parrots, which is actually where I now work. Um, and it was my first time really appreciating how much parrots have sacrificed and how much I didn't even appreciate that, you know, we have a wild animal persisting in our homes and we don't think twice about it. And that I didn't think twice about the fact that when you stick a, a flighted animal in a cage, you, I mean, it's the saddest thing. I, I, I mean, it, it's just heartbreaking. And so, so, yeah. so when you get a dog, you can take them to a dog park and they could run around. Mm -hmm. Do you think the people would you be satisfied with a compromise if people took their parrot to like a, a parrot park and, and kind of you know flew around or that that's that that's not you know, that's not do. enough. So some people do some people do free flight their parrots. Um, it comes with risks, but the reality is that even a park free-flying your parrot is not going to mimic or even closely resemble a 50 square mile habitat flying over the Amazon rainforest and, you know, eating mangoes off a tree and eating, e you know, the, the ite nuts and fruits. And I mean, nothing we can offer a parrot will ever come close to what their life is like in the wild. Yeah. So um, these parrots that, uh, what, what activities do they exhibit to show that, that they don't want to be captive like are they sending us any signals like mm -hmm. do they have like a nervous twitch with an eye like are they doing anything that would just be screaming at us we are not good um you know species co-living co co with them is there is there any signs that we've seen is there's there any a, data there's a lot of there's a lot of signs so up here you haven't anything specific no so <laughs> the <laughs> the most I always, this is always the tough part of the conversation I have. It's sort of the saddest part of the conversation I have when I talk about parrots. Um, parrots engage in, in self-harm and self-mutilation as a result of captivity. And um, they will actually, they, they pluck out their feathers, they destroy their feathers. Um, they will go so far as to go into their skin and into their, their chest bone. And we have parrots that do that. And the day you see a parrot who has attempted to kill itself because the state in which it's being kept is so inappropriate and so contrary to it, its nature, to the thing that makes it want to live. Captivity has taken that away and these parrots are hurting themselves. And we don't see this in the wild. And we can't turn away from that proof. I mean, they can't speak to us and say, I'm unhappy, this isn't working for me. What they're doing is they're pulling their feathers out, they're hurting themselves. and so it. So, you know. so let me ask you this, and mm -hmm. I bet you some people are wondering about this themselves. So, uh, you know, we were in the back, and you see the cage mm -hmm. where uh, Abby and Michelle are. How does that make you feel? You're sitting in, in a exhibit, which is, you know, not too different than these things that you're rallying against. Yeah. Um, is there some irony here? And, and do you, you know, this is a video that, uh, that, that many will see. Do you want to say anything? about the fact that you're in, you know, an enclosed space yeah. uh, to raise awareness because you seem pretty passionate about this. I am extremely passionate about it. And I have been lucky enough to go and work in places like Costa Rica and Guyana, and I've been able to see parrots free. And there's nothing more beautiful than watching a parrot fly free and to fly in a flock with its family. And I'll never let that go. It's like, this is a beautiful exhibit. This is a beautiful zoo. And, and but no matter what, my very core will always tell me there is no cage big enough for a parrot. There is no cage big enough for a flighted animal. And it's not to say that we'll ever have a world where animals won't be living in cages. And I know that's, you know, there's circumstances where we, we have to, I get it. 
but I always want to be pushing forward this idea that we need to challenge the way we look at animals and what we think is acceptable for an animal's existence. And what is their right as an individual? Um, you know, I know that animal rights people get really sensitive about that terminology and this idea, but it's the idea that this is an animal that has a right to autonomy and freedom, and just like we have that. And I want to start that, that conversation, have that dialogue, as uncomfortable as it is, as hypocritical as it can be, I get, you know, it's, it has to happen. So my last question, where is this dialogue? Like, has this gone mainstream? Is this just kind of fringe and, and the people are, 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 who are, are speaking this up, you know, aren't being heard? Like, at what point is this idea? It's, this idea is, it's, it's getting strength, it's growing, it's evolving. Um, each animal's getting its own platform. Cats and dogs are getting a platform. Horses and farm animals are getting platforms. Um, you know, greyhounds are getting a platform. Parrots, we're a little farther behind for some reason. We're about 10 years behind in really getting involved in the animal welfare conversation. Um, and it's an uncomfortable one. It's new. Um, it challenges a lot of our ideas on what is a wild animal versus a tamed animal, what is domesticated versus not, um, what is our right to ownership. Um, are, you know, so it, it taps into all these, these issues. And I want to open that dialogue. Um, I invite people to come to my sanctuary. We have a sanctuary in Hope Valley, Rhode Island. And please check out our website and come. I will give you a tour. I will introduce you to our birds. I will tell you their stories. And we can start the dialogue there. And we can work towards a better future for people and animals to coexist. Great. More peacefully. Uh, I have to ask, did you ever have a parrot when you were growing up? I had a cockatiel growing up. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you feel like you, you were one it. of them and now, now you, you crossed a line. I think I, uh, I was, as a child, probably not the best caregiver for a parrot. It was probably not an appropriate pet for me to have. And I think there is a bit of me that does feel that I need to do right by Monet, which was his name, um, and honor the parrots that need help and need a voice and need us to advocate for them because the reality is that parrots are, are languishing in small cages in people's basements and they are getting sick and they are dying young and they are unhappy and this is a result of captivity and this is a result of, of humans doing this and so if we have the power to change it, we have the power to stop this, we have the power to, to do better and make better choices for these animals. Great. Well, uh, Danica, hear her raw, roar. Thank you for sharing your idea you. from our stage.